Hey everybody, welcome back to The Wolf Pit with another episode of What Are We Eating? Back in the day, I thanked heaven for 7-Eleven on a daily basis. Especially after a late night out of drinking when I needed food and they were the only place open after 1 a.m. There was nothing better to add on a top of a belly full of beer than a greasy chili and cheese big bite or greasy chili cheese nachos. Both of which also made me oh thank heaven for indoor plumbing the morning after. And I also wondered what other bad decisions I made the night before. While we're on the subject of 7-Eleven, does anyone remember the old truck stopper sandwiches? They were my favorite thing ever. And I'm pretty sure they were 90% textured vegetable protein. But daggone it, they were good. And if you're around my age, you'll remember them. But now that I'm older, better looking, and obviously much smarter, I've learned to avoid the already mentioned gut busters late at night. Not only because they're gut busters, but now that I'm older, I'm usually in bed by 8 and don't party like I used to. So I've stopped making late night bad decisions. Although, I still make enough bad decisions during the day. With all that said, I still visit 7-Elevens almost every day. I'm even a 7-Eleven rewards member. See, I'm just important like that. And one day, if you try hard enough, you can be too. So don't be jealous. But the reason I visit 7-Elevens now is because I love their coffee. So I'm in a 7-Eleven two to three times a day. And every day I see and unfortunately smell the heated foods they have and the sausages and whatnot on the roller grill thingamajiggers and it all just about curdles my stomach. And just to think, years ago, I would have eaten most of this stuff. But the other day when I pulled into the 7-Eleven, I saw a sign for a buffalo chicken crunch roll. And for some unknown reason, I began to drool like a rabid dog. So after getting my coffee, I went to check out and I asked Habib if I could get two of the buffalo chicken crunch rolls. And I'm not kidding, his name really is Habib. And he calls me Mr. Larry. I ordered two of the buffalo chicken crunch rolls because they were two for four dollars or they were two dollars and nineteen cents a piece and I thought saving nineteen cents was a good idea and I saw him put four of them in I think the hasty bake oven and I said Habib go ahead and give me all four of them it was at that point I decided to do an impromptu video on the buffalo chicken crunch rolls for you the people I got out into my van and they smelled so good I had to try one while it was nice and fresh and hot I wanted to give you, the people, an idea of how they taste fresh. I didn't have my camera, and I wasn't going to give you guys shoddy video off my phone. But that's why I got four. I'll video the other three. But while in the van, I took my first bite, and I didn't realize they sold lava at 7-Eleven. The outside was extremely crunchy, kind of like a sock in a guy's dorm room. But the inside was like molten steel swishing around in my mouth. I almost had to spit but you guys already know how I feel about spitters. So I went ahead and chewed it up and swallowed it like a champ. But at this point, the inside was way too hot to enjoy. So I put it back in the box with the other three to finish when I got home, which was literally a mile away. Once I pulled into the driveway, it had cooled off enough to finish eating. And I've gotta say, I really enjoyed it. Maybe a little bit too much. So now we only had three buffalo chicken crunch roll wraps to try. For you, the people, so you didn't have to. But before we do, let's do what we do and check out the ingredients. And from what I can tell, the ingredients are not bad at all for a 7-Eleven product. If there's something I'm missing, let me know. Even the chicken looks decent. No TVP. Even though these are resold in the 7-Eleven, these buffalo chicken crunch rolls were made by the original crunch roll factory. And they're actually sold in all kinds of convenience stores and food trucks, also known as Roach Coaches, for obvious reasons, I would assume. Now for the fun part, the nutrition facts, which I always assume the worst in convenience store foods. Per crunch roll, there's 350 calories, 20 grams of total fat, 6 grams of saturated fat, no trans fat, 35 milligrams of cholesterol, 390 milligrams of sodium, 35 grams of carbohydrates, 4 grams of fiber, 3 grams of sugars, and 14 grams of protein. Although the nutrition facts are not great, the numbers aren't nearly as bad as I expected, especially the sodium. 
Usually any meal I review with buffalo sauce has an astronomical amount of sodium. So this was a nice surprise. So here's the three buffalo chicken crunch rolls we have left after the first one was already enjoyed. As you can see, they look pretty much like extra crispy egg rolls you'd make at home. And I mentioned making them at home because most of the ones you get in Chinese restaurants nowadays are a soggy mess. We grabbed one to try, and at this point, it was still very warm, but it wasn't screaming hot like it was before. So we'll taste this one first, and then put the other one in the oven for a few minutes to get it back to the point of hot molten lava like it was when we first bought it. The one we ate in the van was really, really good. After taking the first bite of this one after it cooled down a bit, the flavors really seemed to pop. The buffalo sauce was the predominant flavor, which it should be, and it was a really enjoyable spiciness. Not too spicy at all. There was a good amount of wrapper, which was really, really nice and crispy. Normally I would say it was too much wrapper, but with it being as crispy as it was, the inside was nice and cheesy with a very surprising amount of chicken. The cheese once cooled down a bit was like a pimento cheese, which is actually a really good thing because I love pimento cheese. Or as how y'all say it up north, pimento cheese. If you've never had pimento cheese, you gotta give it a try. It's basically a combination of cream cheese, shredded cheddar cheese, and pimentos, or pimentos. Now I put one in a 350 degree oven for a few minutes to get it back to the lava level like it was when we first bought them. While that crunch roll was reheating, we cut this one in half lengthwise, like in the pictures in the advertisements. And I've got to say, the real buffalo chicken crunch roll looks darn near identical to the one on the picture, except for the hole where maybe a piece of chicken fell out. I was pretty impressed. We dug around for a piece of chicken to try by itself, and we actually found several good sized pieces, which I really didn't expect. Here's one we dug out by itself, and a bigger piece in the other half of the crunch roll that we found while we were still snacking on it. I tried the piece of chicken on its own, and I was very surprised. I was almost in shock. This is like a David Copperfield magic snack, because the chicken on its own had to be the driest, and I mean powdery dry, piece of chicken I've ever had. I mean, it almost tasted like it was dehydrated. But with that said, inside the crunch roll, mixed with the cheesy goodness and the tasty buffalo sauce, it was delicious and you would have never known it was dry. So since the chicken and the crunch roll are meant to be eaten as a whole, and it was good that way, who cares how dry the chicken was? Now here's the one we reheated in a 350 degree oven for about five minutes to get the inside lava hot. And usually crispy type things don't reheat well. But just listen to how crispy the outside was when we cut into it. And I don't think this is just from reheating, even the ones after cooling were really nice and crispy. One of the things I really like about these crunch rolls is even when they're lava hot on the inside, the cheese isn't oozing out and pouring all over the place. So they're definitely a snack that's easy to eat on the go. And they're full of chicken like I mentioned before. Look at that. Listen to the crunch when Courtney takes a bite. When you heat them up, the hot sauce gets hotter. She thought they were spicier when they were heated, but I thought the heat level was consistent when they were warm or lava hot. So she wanted to dip it into some ranch dressing. Even after the dip in the ranch, they were still ridiculously crunchy. But not a real dense hard crunch but a nice, light, enjoyable crunch. In other words, it wasn't like eating rocks. Keep in mind, these very crunchy bites are from the middle, where things like this usually will become soggy from the filling. So I wanted to take a bite from the end, which is usually the crunchiest. I added a little bit of ranch too. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, that right there is the absolute perfect amount of crispification. 
I've got to say, these buffalo chicken crunch rolls really surprised the oh thank heaven for 7-Eleven right out of me. At first, the one thing I didn't like about these, even before I tasted them, was the price. $2 a piece sounds like a lot and probably is a little inflated on these. But after eating them, even though I still think $1.50 would be a more reasonable price, I'd pay $2 a piece all day every day for these. Even though the chicken was the driest piece of chicken I've ever eaten, but in this application, it worked better by being dry in my opinion. The creaminess from the cheese made up for the dryness without you even noticing the dry chicken, which could be an intentional genius move on the original Crunchyroll factory. Why do I say that? Because moist chicken mixed with the creamy cheese probably would have affected the crunchiness and made these soggy over time. So on its own, the chicken would have been bad, but eaten the way it was intended to, as a whole, with the buffalo chicken crunch roll, worked perfectly. The crispiness of these crunch rolls, well, it's pure crispification at its best. These were super crunchy, they weren't greasy, the buffalo sauce, chicken, and cheese combination were an absolute perfect balance of flavor, they were loaded with the chicken and cheese filling, and the cheese was cheesy, but not gooey and messy. And I actually wanted to knock one point off for the price, but I really can't because you get what you pay for, and I think this is a pretty damn decent product, which is why I'm gonna give it a scarce 10 out of 10. If you'd like to help support the Wolf Pit, consider being a patron. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month, that's only $12 for the whole year, or you can pledge more. That's up to you. Either way, every little bit's appreciated and helps me produce more high quality videos more often for you, the people. Thank you all very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.